The building behind us is the Barrett Green Armory. Uh, it was uh, constructed just shortly before the outbreak of the First World War. It's where the uh, 26th Battalion, when it was first uh, formed up in November of uh, 1914, was uh, stationed uh, before they departed for overseas. So the troops that were raised for the uh, battalion came from all over New Brunswick, a lot of them from St. John, but uh, other places uh, all across the uh, province. There was a fairly large contingent from Prince Edward Island, there were Nova Scotians, there were even a few Americans uh, in the ranks of the original battalion, but predominantly it was New Brunswick's battalion. So they spent the first uh, six months organizing, training, preparing to uh, depart uh, for uh, Fort Britain for additional training. So the troops would have re uh, been recruited here, would have joined up here at the armory. They also lived here uh, during that uh, time. Yeah, Lieutenant Harry Ferguson was one of the originals. He was from Campbellton, New Brunswick. Uh, he was, uh, even though he was only 25 years old when he joined up, he was still a relatively accomplished young man. He, he and his brother owned a men's clothing store in Campbellton. Saturday, June 12, 1915. We paraded for embarkation at 6 p.m. The crowds that lined every street we passed were immense and broke our lines again and again by closing in on us to say goodbyes to their friends. Besides our fife and drum band, we had three brass bands from the city who played till about nine while we were lined up along the wharf. Lieutenant Harry Ferguson. This is where the march of the 26th, which had started up at the armory, finally ended when they arrived here at the wharf where the Caledonia was tied up. So they, they marched back and forth through the streets of St. John and came uh, in this direction here and then down Duke Street uh, and across water through to this area. And in the meantime, all of the people who had been following the March of the 26th spilled out into Duke Street and completely filled the space uh, for uh, probably a block or so back up uh, Duke. And then they cordoned off the area and uh, allowed the troops, once they'd gotten settled, to then uh, come forward and mingle with the crowd uh, to uh, say their last farewells uh, before uh, the, uh, it turned dark and the crowd began to disperse and the troops uh, were settled uh, in the freight sheds in this area for the night. Sunday, June 13th, 1915. Up at 5 a.m. this morning, feeling stiff and sore from sleeping on a crack all night. I really only slept three hours altogether. When we cast off our moorings at 11.30 a.m., the entire wharf and waterfront, for nearly half a mile, was literally jammed with people, not to mention dozens and dozens of tugs and small boats circling about in the water around us. As I scanned the crowd, I could see many a red nose and watery eyes due to excessive use of handkerchiefs and all sorts of farewells were waved, thrown, and kissed. It is an inspiring sight, the crowded wharfs and the ship lined everywhere with khaki uniforms, away up to the top riggings, the bands playing, whistles blowing, cheering and yelling in a most amazing uproar. The boats about us followed us out until our speed left them behind. Lieutenant Harry Ferguson. This is the monument that was put up to commemorate the departure of the 26th on board the Caledonia on uh, June 13, 1915. About uh, 10 years after the end of the war, the 26th Battalion established a battalion association for veterans of the unit. They chose June 13th as the date uh, on which they met every year for the next 70 years. They met uh, well into the uh, 1980s before most of the members had died by then and they finally uh, stopped meeting. So June 13th uh, is, is a very uh, significant uh, date for the province.